Hallo, ich bin ein Timetiller, once again talking about the German watches. Uh, actually, in this episode, I'm gonna go ahead and do my American accent because in 2020, there's no way I could get away with doing an entire episode pretending to be a German, even though I'm gonna be talking about the German watches. It's 8.40 p.m., let's get down to business. <laughs> Man, oh man, I get so excited every time I do an episode based around German watches because, uh, you know, it's never satisfying for people. Some people are like, oh, okay, he's talking about German watches, wow, cool, and then the majority of people are like, wow, he never talks about German watches. I heard it's because he has a chip on his shoulder. And I'm here like, why would I have a chip on my shoulder? It's kind of, oh, the Jew, it's the Jewish thing, okay. The only reason I bring that joke up is because I've made lists of German watches uh, in certain episodes before I've reviewed a German watch on this channel, and um, you know what? Like, the comment section is just spammed with people being like, he doesn't talk about German watches because he celebrates Hanukkah. Except they, you know, they use different wording. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, uh, the reason I don't talk about German watches is, um, well, I do. <laughs> I do talk about German watches. I don't know if any of you like watch my live streams, but there's a bunch of different watches that happen to be German that I really do like. So you know what, instead of just making you guys go watch like hour long live streams, I'm just gonna compile some really underrated, really cool German watches in this episode. I like watches just for, you know, I judge them on a watch to watch basis. I don't really care where they're made, but yeah, there's gonna be, let's see. 10 German watches on this list that I personally would love to own. Starting with Zinn or Sin. I don't care how you pronounce it, uh, S-I-N-N. -N. I'm just gonna go ahead and say Sign because uh, people will get upset regardless of, of how I choose to pronounce it. But uh, the Sin Model Hunting 3006. Very, very functional, highly complicated, very robust, big, beefy boy of a chronograph. And I've heard one of my channel members, Rick Green, taught me uh, this actually has a very specific purpose. So Zinn is a German company. Um, this chronograph is a hunting watch, as they've you know, the, the title of the watch is the Zinn hunting model. Now, this has a moonlight display, it has a day-night indicator. Uh, why would that be useful? Well, apparently in Germany, and I'm sure uh, some of my German viewers can help clarify this, um, as I've been told, in Germany they have very different hunting laws than we do here stateside, and I guess at nighttime, um, if you were to do some uh, evening hunts, uh, you're not allowed to hunt with artificial light sources, uh, which is crazy because I know some dudes down in Texas that go hog hunting every season and they have like full night vision goggles. It looks like they are like SEAL Team 6. It's crazy to go hunt some hogs, but I guess you're like not allowed to do that or something in Germany. So this with that moonlight display lets you know uh, when the moon will be in the most preferential you know, position for you to get some decent light during your hunt. Very cool. I, I mean, I'm probably not going to be using it for, for that, but it looks really cool. And I, if you want like a tool chronograph, this is the one to pick, I think. And why do I say it is a tool chronograph? Well, again, a uh, very robust build. You're getting a 200 meter water resistance rating, a threaded crown, sapphire crystal front and rear because it does have a display case back. Uh, let's see, 24 hour display, uh, day night indicator, moonlight display, um, just a whole bunch of really cool design choices, kind of subdued, almost patinated indexes and hands uh, with that kind of forest, almost olive drab dial uh, really really cool um, with tegumented stainless steel hey Zin is very well known for that everyone some people call it a gimmick some people say oh well it's hyper hyper super duper scratch resistant I just think it's badass but I gotta be honest with you guys this is a beefy boy okay 44 millimeter case diameter uh, 22 millimeter lug width so you know pretty thick strap there 15.5 millimeter case thickness. I think that's uh, the biggest measurement there. That's gonna be a pretty thick piece on your wrist. Um, you know, 
much like this Seiko Tuna here, but just a badass watch and it's German. Moving on to another Zin, the Zin 856 UTC. I've recommended this watch multiple times on this channel. I think it is so badass with those integrated crown guards, uh, how the case just kind of swoops into that crown. Um, very beefy build, again, coming from Zin. They make some very functional tool watches. Uh, again, big, bold, legible indexes, uh, the 3129 indexes uh, or numerals I should say, and of course the six. I don't know why I left the six out. Uh, the 12369 Arabics, as I should say. Um, really, really bold. It does have a four o'clock date window. I don't, you know, not super into that, but I think they pulled it off well enough. Big, broad hands, and again, we are getting a UTC complication. UTC displays a secondary time zone the same way GMT would. Uh, some hardcore time nerds would tell you that UTC is actually a better way of displaying time because it's more accurate, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's essentially GMT. So if you're looking for a GMT watch that's technically I guess not GMT, but still, you know, displays the time the same way. Check out this Zin 856 UTC. They have it in uh, this kind of black, I, is it PVD coated? They have it black and then they have it your kind of standard uh, subdued, um, normal steel coated. It, it, it is very, very, very cool. Very slick, tough looking watch. Pretty much the only thing I don't like about it is the four o'clock date window. That's like the one thing that I don't like about it, but even the uh, dimensions are very nice. Um, let's see, 40 by 47 millimeters, uh, only 11 millimeters thick and uh, 20 millimeter lug width. Very, very nice. Next up, a Stoa. And yes, I'm gonna say Stoa, even though people like to kind of complain, they say, oh, excuse me, it's Stova? Really, Stova? That's crazy, do you pronounce BMW, BMW? Because in Germany, they do pronounce it BMW. But you can't tell me to pronounce this Stova unless you're also gonna say the BMW M3. All I ask is for you to keep it congruent, guys. You never do. Anyway, the Stoa Partito, hey, the Partito! It sounds like it should be Italian, but you know, that K in the automatic tells me that this is German. There's just something about this Partito Classic that looks very, very cool. Um, again, Pilot's Watch, simple. It is a Stoa, so you know they're, they're known for making Pilot's Watches. Uh, very simple dial. You see really old school uh, vintage versions of this with like highly patinated, almost tropical dials. Um, I just love this watch. I don't know what it is. It's like, it's not Bauhausy, but it is kind of minimalist, a little bit. It's very simple, I'll say that, um, but I really like it. But as much as I like that Partido, there's another Stoa I like even more, the Flieger Bronze Vintage. This watch is so freaking cool, so tough looking. I love that display case back with that huge rotor. Uh, and again, bronze case, they do it very, very nicely. This is one bronze watch that doesn't look nautical and it shouldn't be uh, because again, it's a Flieger, it's a pilot's watch. If you're gonna be in the, the air, you don't, you don't wanna be in the wet because if you're supposed to be up here and you end up down there, you goofed. Gorgeous display case back. I don't know what more I can say. Patinated indexes, patinated hands. I think it goes very, very well with that old school Flieger look. Again, I love it. Very simple, no branding on the dial. Uh, this looks like it could be just an old, robust pilot's watch that you picked up and uh, you found it in some, you know, Army Navy store bin. And uh, especially when that bronze starts getting a really nice patina, it's going to look the part of being a very old, maybe used pilot's watch. I love that. Looks rustic, looks tough, but you have the confidence of knowing that you can actually wear this every day because it's a modern built watch. Again, great dimensions coming from Stoa, 40 millimeters. It is a little bit on the big side when we're looking at lug to lug, almost 50 millimeters. In fact, it's just under 49 millimeters lug to lug, but it is a pilot's watch, so that makes sense. You know, it has to be big, bold, and beautiful. Powered by an ETA, just like both of those Zins I mentioned before, this is also powered by an ETA. Two eight 
042 to be exact, or an automatic ETA 28242. So whether you go for the hand wind or the automatic, I think, you know, uh, the world is your oyster. You can choose whichever one you want. I personally love the look of that automatic. Next up, a watch I've mentioned numerous times on this channel. I don't have to spend very much time on it. The Longa Perpetual Tourbillon. And of course it is a datagraph perpetual tourbillon, salmon dial, white gold case, white gold indexes, white gold hands, moon phase complication. It's a datagraph, so we all know how freaking impressive those are. Uh, a little bit out of my price range, you know, just a little bit out of my price range, about 277,800 euros. Um, probably, I'm probably, you know, I'm waitlisted. That's what I'll just say. That's what I'll tell them. I'm waitlisted, guys. Shucks. Wish I could get it. Those dang wait lists, dang. If I wasn't on the wait list, I'd be wearing it. Man, someday I'll get rid of this tuna and wear the watch I really want. Stupid wait, li wait lists, man. It says it right here. God, I hate wait lists. Stupid ADs. Guys, I want, I want this watch but it's, it's expensive. Why has everything got to cost money? <sighs> All jokes aside, the Datagraph Perpetual Tourbillon, uh, let's see, it's part of the Saxonia family of Longa watches. Uh, reference number 740056, powered by the L952.2 caliber movement, limited to 100 timepieces. Um, this is a very impressive watch, 41.5 millimeters, 14.6 millimeters thick, so a bit thicky for a dress watch, but I don't think that matters because you're wearing a freaking perpetual tourbillon datagraph. And on to the next German watch from out of left field. I don't think many of you um, saw this one coming. <laughs> this is a company named Chrono Swiss. They're not Swiss, they're German. I understand the confusion. And I'm talking about 2014's Basel World release, the Sirius Retrograde Day by Chrono Swiss. Really cool watch, very interesting dial layout. When you're seeing uh, the date complication, it's not displayed in like the typical way. It's not a wheel, it's not a dial. I guess technically it is a dial, but it's not a circular dial is what I was saying. And of course you're getting the big date complication. Something about this watch that really stood out to me the second I saw it was that matte black dial and uh, it being dynamic, but still very, very tasteful and elegant. It's a way to have this really, really dynamic look without it being too out there. Like. I've shown people uh, the perpetual tourbillon datagraph and them being like, oh, I don't, there's too much going on. But this, I feel like you can still have some things going on on the dial and it's, you know, still kind of subdued. This came with a black dial that I'm more partial to and a more like a caramel dial, I think they called it. It's not really chocolate, but um, it's ugly. <laughs> The black dial is the one to go with. But yeah, guys, again, uh, rose gold matte black dial, really, really interesting dial layout from Chrono Swiss, a company that is highly underrated. I think a lot of their stuff is a bit out there, but this is just right on the money. I'm not gonna officially give it a chef's kiss. I, I, I guess I technically did. This one's not getting the official chef's kiss though. This is gonna get the, that was the sous chef kiss. I'll do it again, sous chef. Moving on to a German company I don't talk about enough, Damasco, okay? They make some really, really tough watches. Um, I think they're in a very similar league to Zinn. Um, you know, guys, I've been thinking, I want more of a tool chronograph. And that's why, you know, that hunting 3006 uh, from Zinn was very, very interesting to me. And I've also been looking at the Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot uh, automatic chronograph GMT. That's also a really fun tool watch chronograph. Again, uh, threaded crowns on all of them. Uh, I think like 200 meter water resistance ratings on all of them. Um, or I think the Oris might have 100, but still threaded crown. Really, really usable, really, really functional. Well, still in, in that same vein, Damasco has their DC56, and I really like the PVD coated black. Um, 25 joule, I think it's a modified value. It's a, I think it's based off of a 7750. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think it's a value 7750. Uh, 25 joule automatic, um, really, 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 really cool. 
there's, I'm looking at it right now. It definitely has a pilot's watch aesthetic. Uh, running seconds over by the nine o'clock. Uh, you are getting a day date complication that sits just below the three o'clock. Uh, very intuitive layout, I would say. Big, broad numerals, uh, big, broad hands, uh, bold numerals. Um, really, really cool. I think if you got it standard or in the black uh, coating, I don't think you're gonna do wrong, but man, I, I really, 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 really like that. Yeah, sapphire crystal, screw down crown, let me see. Yeah, 100 meter water resistance rating on this one as well. So I'm trying to figure out if I want a tool chronograph, which one would I get? The Zin 3006 hunting, something a bit more reasonable like this DC56 from Damasco, or perhaps an Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot GMT automatic chronograph. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Which one would you choose and which one do you think I should choose? I'd love to hear your input on those. But yeah, this Damasco, such a badass watch. Now I want a bit of a drum roll. Okay, for the next German watch that I'm gonna talk about because uh, we're moving on to a company that I think is perhaps one of the most underrated German watch manufacturers, but also perhaps one of the most underrated watchmakers, like period, because uh, on a lot of people's lists, this company does not show up, and I think it's a huge disservice. I'm talking about Glossuta Original, okay, and I'm probably mispronouncing it, but um, Glossuta Original is a German watchmaker, okay, but they have some of the most interesting dial layouts, they have some of the most, like, elegant, complicated dress watches, and it's very unfortunate they don't get the recognition they deserve because their watches, I think their finishing and their design, it's second to none, okay? So if you're a fan of Longa, um, even if you're a fan of FP Journe, I think you would really appreciate what Glossuta Original is coming out with, but not a lot of people even know they exist, and it's very, very unfortunate. So first, from Glossuta, I wanna take a look at the Glossuta Original Senator Torbjorn. Now, the Senator series, um, very, very interesting. They have multiple, you know, complicated dial layouts. Uh, this one, the Senator Torbjorn uh, black dial, kind of a textured matte black dial, um, big date complication right under the 12 o'clock Roman numeral, and uh, you are getting a Torbjorn and I think it's very, very fun how uh, the Roman numerals just kind of slide off of that chapter ring. Um, everything is in line. Uh, you're getting their automatic 9403 movement. Um, it's just a gorgeous watch. And you know, I don't get all crazy about tourbillons. I don't think it's the most necessary uh, attribute a movement can have. But something about this watch, the way it is executed upon... Um, just gorgeous and it doesn't hurt that this watch is solid white gold um but yeah <laughs> it's just a beautiful watch and of course with these complications it's going to be a bit bigger than that 40 millimeter sweet spot 42 millimeters and 13.7 millimeters thick so a bit thick and a bit big but um <laughs> Oh God, that's what she said. They do have a white dial blue hand variant and normally, you know, uh, blue hands on a white dial, I'm a sucker for that, but this black dial, whew, mama. But moving on to a lighter dial with blue hands, Glossuta Original has something for us, the Senator Chronometer Limited Edition. Uh, this is not a tourbillon, um, not highly complicated as far as a ton of things going on, but boy, oh boy, it's a hand wind uh, with their 5803 movement. Uh, you're getting running time indication, small seconds off center. It says second stop, panorama date, hour and minute central, day, night indicator. Again, white gold. I guess I'm, I get that's like my thing right now. I don't own any white gold. I don't think I own any white gold currently, but man. I would love to with this one. A bit thinner than that Senator Torbillon at 12.47 millimeters, but exactly the same case diameter at 42 millimeters. Uh, this is such a sick watch, dude. <laughs> it's just, it's gorgeous. Again, Roman numerals, that kind of cream colored dial with the blue hands, it's gorgeous. And finishing up the list, we have to finish it with another Glossuta because, um, again, this this is one of my favorite German watch manufacturers. I gotta get a hold of them and see if I can review some of them here in the office because they are just amazing. Uh, the Panomatic Lunar, 
Okay, uh, this is not technically part of their Senator series. This is part of their Pano series. And uh, this is a moon phase. Uh, let's see, you're getting small second off center start, uh, what about, excuse me, small second off center, second stop, that's what I meant. Uh, panorama date, hour and minute off center, moon phase, okay? Um, and this is what I'm talking about with their kind of risky dial layouts. It's not something you see every day. You do kind of see this with Longa, them putting certain things like just out there on the dial. Uh, this is almost a bit abstract in a way without being totally off-putting. Um, I've told you many times, I'm a fan of symmetry. Uh, I don't like it. Like, like one huge qualm I had with the JLC Gyro Torbjorn was I wouldn't wear it because if I wanted to, you know, tell the time, it's like a watch dial inside of a watch dial. It, it was like, I don't like it when it's off center and then it's just too much going on. They're definitely doing that. Glasuta Original is definitely doing that. Again, off center uh, time dial. And for some reason, I'm just really into it. Again, that black dial looks really elegant. It's gorgeous. This is not white gold, by the way. This is stainless steel. So super reasonable, guys. But guys, this is actually also one of their more reasonably sized watches as well, because it's right within that 40 millimeter sweet spot at 40 millimeters and 12.7 millimeters thick. So um, if you're looking for a more reasonably priced one, this is not precious metal. And uh, it is uh, also more reasonably sized by two millimeters. So right within that sweet spot, I absolutely love uh, Glasuta Original. And again, I'm a big boy now. I got over 100,000 subscribers. I got to get one of them here in the office. Just tell them, you know what? You just gotta give me one. But all jokes aside, I hope you really enjoyed this episode with the time teller talking about the German watches. Hope you don't mind the accent, just having a good time, just hanging out, talking about watches. That's gonna offend someone, I'm realizing right now. I'm gonna stop. But seriously, I had a really good time talking about these watches from the Deutschland. And if you enjoyed yourself talking about these German watches, then please leave me a comment. Which one is your favorite? Not only on this list, but out of all the watches, from all of the Deutschland. What is your favorite? Guys, if you learned something new and if you saw a watch and you were like, dang, then please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, hit that bell icon, join the channel, become a certified T3 bot, $4.99 a month. It's essentially YouTube's Patreon. You get two extra pieces of content every week. That is six pieces of content every single week, guys, and you get access to the members only Discord chat. We have a whole lot of fun over there, so please hit the join button next to the subscribe button. You can become a certified T3 bot. Check out all the affiliate links in the description below. Check out the Time Teller shop, duh. Uh, do we have any German watches there? I don't think so. I think they're all Swiss currently, actually. Hey, not bad. Watch, now they're gonna be like, oh, he doesn't have any German watches at the Time Teller shop because he's Jewish. <laughs> but seriously, guys, thank you for all the support. Thank you for taking me over 125,000 subscribers, you freaking rock. And uh, you heard it here. Guess what? I like German watches. Big deal. Like, comment, subscribe, show this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. <laughs>